the numbers. Oh, we got OBS. Uh, uh, hi. Um. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have y'all heard the proverbial a text without a context is a pretext? Have you heard that before? A lot of uh, people who uh, believe and read the authorized version of the scriptures have heard that. A lot of these King James Bible believing Christians are aware of that statement. Um, aware it matriculated from, I don't know and I don't care. But a text, like, you know, something written down for us, without a context is a pretext. I'm going to share two words with you out of Webster's 1828 dictionary. Pretext. This, this is meat. This is meat for what we're going to be addressing today. Okay? Pretext. From Mr. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Pretext. Not even going to bother with the Latin stuff. Pretense. False appearance. A text. A text without a context is a pretext. Hmm. Pretext, pretense, false appearance, ostensible reason or motive assigned or assumed as a color or cover for the real reason or motive. Like so many of these educated Christians who put on the suit and tie and go to Jesuit trained universities who know the truth and actually lie about it. Mm. He gave plausible reasons for his conduct. The end justifies the means. <laughs> right. But these were only a pretext to conceal his real motives. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Quoting some dude named Chapman here. He made pretext that I should only go and help convey his fright. Freight, excuse me, freight. But thought not so. F R I G H T. Freight. F R E I G H T. Freight. Excuse me. <laughs> what? I, I told you guys that I'm uh, not even a high school dropout. Not my problem, you don't believe me. Okay? They suck the blood of those they depend on under a pretext. Of service and kindness. That's what that little unfortunate lost young man, the fledgling, accused me of. <laughs> but that's the definition of a pretext. So a text without a context is a pretext. And what is a pretext that is defined? You, you, you're not going to find the word pretext in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, you're not. Okay? So pretext as defined by the beloved <laughs> Noah Webster is pretense, false appearance, ostensible reason or motive assigned or assumed as a color or cover for the real reason or motive. He gave plausible reasons for his conduct, but these were only a pretext to conceal his real motives. Okay? 
So a text without a context. Context. What is context? Again, you will not find the word context within the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Uh, I often use the analogy of a sandwich as what is context. You know, you got the... <laughs> <laughs> you got the bread of life on the top in the middle and in uh, on the top and on the bottom and in the middle you got the uh, these guys are like peanut butter and jelly <laughs> knowing how greedy you are there fledgling you probably would want to go after a copyright infringement over that wouldn't you anyway you probably would so vain and petty <laughs> Not the brightest, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, that's for a certain cultic individual. Uh, context, context. Noah's eighteen twenty-eight dictionary. Context. Not going to mess with the Latin. The general series or composition of a discourse, more particularly the parts of a discourse which precede or follow the sentence quoted. Like I said, the sandwich analogy. On top you got the bread of life and on the bottom you got the bread of life and in the middle is the peanut butter and jelly. The sandwich. Context. Okay? Okay? When you look in scripture, okay, it's always good to get the context in order to know, like, like for example, if you're, if, if just an example, if you're reading Second uh, Timothy chapter two, okay, and you look at verse twenty-three, by but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Okay, uh, context, context, flee also also youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is self-sacrifice, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish, the fool says in his heart there is no God. So pure heart, pure heart, one, the one that is knit together with the Lord. Okay? All right? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. So see, the gentle is not withholding truth. The gentle is being apt to teach, patient. You don't take the whole of scripture and cram it down people's throats. I've done, I've made that mistake on numerous occasions. Okay, you, I, like a clock, you wind me up and start asking questions, you can get me going. <laughs> okay, but okay, back, back to the definition of context, okay? The general series or composition of a discourse, more particularly, more particularly, the parts of a discourse which precede or follow the sentence quoted. The passages of scripture which are near the text, which just demonstrated, either before or after it, the sandwich, the bread of life on top, the bread of life on the bottom, in the middle there is the peanut butter and jelly, okay? The sense of a passage of scripture is often illustrated by the context. If you search in words and you want to know a pure definition of a word, check the scripture first and context. For example, for example, kingdom of God. Kingdom of God generally is a reference onto the spiritual kingdom, which is now, okay? Which is now. It can, according to context, be a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. But see, it's defined by the context. Here's another one. Context. Knit or woven together. Close. Firm. And another one. Context. To knit together. The sandwich. 
Okay? The sandwich. All right? All right? You, you, you got that? Contacts. So, a, a text without a context is a pretext. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, follow me along. Read along, word for word, verse by verse, of what we are going to be looking at today. Okay, read along with me. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily. Daily. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Here a little, there a little. Line, of, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay? All right? Read along with me too because um, my mouth goes quicker than my brain and the brain goes quicker than the mouth. Okay, if you've watched any of these videos, <laughs> this is, and this is stuff my enemies like to, you know, get on me. Yeah, that's fine, go ahead, take a number. <laughs> take a fence in the gate. But uh, follow, read along with me, follow along with me, okay? You see with your own eyes in the scriptures, okay? All right? We're going to begin in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I will be silent, brother. Okay? You're right. <laughs> you checked the, the previous video in the comment left by um, a man after my, <laughs> a man who's after my own heart. <laughs> Next to my own heart, that's probably the wrong phraseology. Um, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay? So, I'll be silent. I might need to be reminded of that again, brother, but you, you know me. <laughs> okay? You do, actually. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, squid love their own, truce breakers, false accusers, like the little cultic individual I made a reference to earlier, okay? incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And there is only one good. That is God. We kind of covered that in um, Monday's video. Monday or Sunday's video. I can't remember. Okay? Traitors, heady, high-minded, pretty highly of yourselves, especially when you got your own little cult to click together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No wonder uh, the world really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird mix of uh, love-hate relationship with Christianity that the world seems to have. Okay? It, it really is. It's bizarre. But that's Christianity. And Christianity... <laughs> Guess what? Christianity is not of Christ. Christ of the scriptures. Anyway. Anyway, let's continue. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Look at the comment sections in some of these, some just random videos, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lovers of pleasures, or the lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Form of godliness. Form of godliness. Yeah. Writing down a, a thing for it, the script. Uh, never mind, okay? Having a form of godliness. But 
denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses. How do, how do they creep in houses nowadays? Oh, very simple. Very simple. What are these? A tablet. This is a tablet. Or your internet or something like that. Unsuspecting or something like that. They creep in the houses. Like I've told you before in Luke chapter 4, how does the devil show you the world in a moment of time like he did to our Father, Lord Jesus Christ? Like that, through one of them. Do this. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. So see, these people that have a form of godliness are not going, are not fixed on the truth to give you the truth, but they're fixed on what? Pleasure, flesh, carnal, carne, okay? Ever learning, ever learning, and never able, not came, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they love a lie. They love a lie. And did you need... We can go ahead and uh, very quickly uh, quote uh, from Second Thessalonians, which is... Dude, you still watch these. I know you do. Uh, th that was a horrible thing you tried to pull. Trying to say that Second Thessalonians 1 through, what is it, 12 is... <laughs> Paul writing for the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what the fake gracers do to try to justify, just believe, and receive. That bad. That that bad, dude. You, uh, anyway. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses ten unto twelve. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. In Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Receive the love of the truth. Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. Genius. Okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Love of the truth. Received it. Okay? All right? Christ in you, the hope of glory. You go the elect way of the cross through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, you call upon His name. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Send them. Hey! You, you, you don't want the truth? You don't love the truth? Okay? God, God's a giving God. You want truth? He, he, here. He'll give you truth. You want a lie here? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Here. Here. Go, go right ahead, man. Go right ahead. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That they should believe a lie. What greater lie in history than other than, Yea, hath God said, and ye shall be as gods. Because, Yea, hath God said, you're questioning what God said. So if you're questioning what God said, that means what? You're your own God? What bigger lies could there be? What bigger lie in all of recorded history is there? That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I, I've seen these, these, uh, I gotta tell you, these, these guys like the fake gracers uh, and these weird streaming Christians, um, th there's, a, there's a dear brother of ours who does streaming and he knows how I feel about that and, and unfortunately, I, I've, I've mentioned about this brother before, I love him. I believe he is our brother, but he and I unfortunately can't get along. And that's whatever. 
But uh, I've, I've noticed this with a lot of the streaming free grace twits. They like to use a very complex vocabulary. They ain't nothing wrong with that. But see, when you use it as a pretext to give off the appearance that you're actually intelligent and know something of scripture because you use all this fancy schmancy language and wordage, okay? That, that's, yeah, that, that's a pretext. A cover, a false front. To hide the fact that they don't have wisdom, fear the Lord, but they have a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, and hence the knowledge they have is fleshly, not spiritual. Well, it is spiritual because it comes from, you know, the God of this world, little G God. Hmm. It's, it's fascinating. It's like, you know... Um, when um, one of the very first people that I listened to for a while, his name was Art Katz, um, a Hebraic Jew. Uh, I don't think the man was saved um, <laughs> at all. You, you check him out, you'll see why I say that. But uh, he used all these fancy schmancy words and he was against eternal security. Once saved, always saved. The seal until the day of redemption. He was against the uh, redemption of the purchase possession. But yet equated the, uh, the seven years as the time of Jacob's trouble. Very, very bizarre. Very bizarre. Pentecostal. Charism definitely a charismatic Pentecostal. I bring him up because he used all this fancy rhetoric. Okay, all these things. They, hey, there's nothing wrong with using words. We, we use words all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But so many of the, especially these streaming guys, man. Oh, these, these guys, they, they actually make me chuckle now. Uh, that when they use all this fancy rhetoric and words to give off this facade that they something they ain't. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's laughable. We are going to look at a very wicked, vile culprit of this today. Uh, Titus, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Yes, because like it says in Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, oh, uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. But, their mind, but even their mind and con conscience is defiled. Uh, go back to Ezekiel chapter 28 which is talking about Satan, Lucifer, okay? Ezekiel chapter 28, uh, where is that? <clears throat> All right. Verses 15 on to verse 17. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled thee with the mul they have filled Excuse me. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the mist of thee with violence. That, that's why you read along with me. That little mishap there, you're like, if you were, Brad, 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 Brad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the mist of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. 
Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Verse 18 again. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, shooting yourself in the foot. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So, now like I said, there's nothing wrong with having a proper, good vocabulary. Hey! Hey! You using words, good words, fine! Thank the Lord! But see, there is a big difference from these educated twits and a lot of these Christians who will use these big, bombastic vocabulary to deceive, to give you the impression that they have something that they don't. And we're about to see a very, very, very crafty smooth, subtle um, example of this. Okay? I have talked about these guys before. This is the Shepherd's Chapel. Shepherd's Chapel. This, these, the Murray family. Um, the, now this guy is um, not Arnold. Arnold Murray was the dude who uh, who started this, and this is his boy. Uh, the Shepherd's Chapel. These guys are Bollingerites. This is Bollinger's piece of work. He uses the uh, authorized version of the scripture, the text. Okay, he does. But see, he, he messes with the capitalization interesting about this okay I was going to use this for this video but I'm not going to do that uh, the companion Bible uh, edited by Mr. Bullinger who uh, these guys this Murray guy is his, is his name Daniel Murray I can't remember but th th these guys are devils okay these guys are devils this is their coup de gras this is their modus operandi uh, Bollinger and his notes, okay? Um, warning about Shepherd's Chapel. Number one, they teach the serpent seed doctrine, okay? That Lucifer and Eve, okay? Which also leads into this nonsensical thing that of British Hebrew Israelites, okay? And um, um, if you see this, my dear friend, my dear friend, I'm not going to say your name, but you're going to catch who you are if you see this. Jesus Christ was not a Hamite. Jesus Christ was not a Japhethite. Jesus Christ was Shemitic is Shemitic. He's a Jew. He's a Hebrew. Okay? I'll, I'll say that. Okay? But, okay, the Shepherd's Chapel guys teach the Serpent Seed Doctrine. Nonsense. Video for that will be in the description box. They also teach the Gap Theory. That between Genesis whatever, uh, 1, 2, and 3, whatever, video will be in the description box that the earth is actually millions and billions of years old. And, uh, and quickly about that, like this is the second earth, that the first earth was destroyed. But see, here, here's the thing, uh, in Revelation, any of you people, any of you people that, uh, <laughs> that believe this ridiculous gap theory, that this is like the second or third or whatever earth that we're on, uh, uh, Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 
Oh, unless, unless of course, the book of Revelation isn't chronological. Okay, but... Dear, dear gap theory, dear deceived disciple of these devils, uh, <laughs> we're on the first earth still, okay? The gap theory is stupid. These guys teach the gap theory. These guys also teach soul annihilationism, which is a tenet of Bollingerism, okay? They, 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 you go to hell, like that stupid idiot Andy, okay? Tell him I said so, all right? Uh, that stupid idiot Andy, like, uh, they go to hell, and they get chastised in fire, and then they believe in God, that's Catholic, okay? That guy's a Catholic. But they, they believe in soul annihilationism. <laughs> These guys, okay, I have their introductory offer about the mark of the beast, where they say, don't. Be deceived by Satan. These guys teach a... They don't teach what the scriptures teach, that the mark of the beast is actually something literally in your right hand or in your forehead. They uh, um, spiritualize it. Okay? They teach contrary to the scripture. Scripture is plain. The mark of the beast is a physical thing that you receive in your right hand or in your forehead that you might buy uh, that you might buy or sell during the time of Jacob's trouble. And scripture is also plain that if you take that, you're going straight to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. They teach contrary to that. Okay? They do. And any of you people who are shepherd chapel people, you know that. Okay? And of course. When you, you we're on this thing, okay, um, they're against the redemption of the purchased possession. Oh, wow, gee, go figure that one out. They're against the redemption of the purchased possession. They preach and teach that grace is going through the great tribulation. Okay, that's five. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, okay? These guys, they, they're all about their, their Bullinger's thing and the strong concordance and you know, go to the Greek and the Hebrew. Which one? Okay? These guys are the, the, one of the best examples of what we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. And also, verse uh, 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. These guys, this guy's a devil. He's not saved. His daddy, uh, Arnold Murray, was a nitwit twit crazy. And he's in hell too. Okay? These guys are devils. These guys, they use the authorized version though. But his daddy and him... They correct it with the Greek from Strong's Concordance. And that, that, that wow, well, okay. <laughs> All right, now, pay attention. Listen to this carefully. I'm not, I'm not gonna say a word, it's only 40 seconds or 39 seconds, okay. Listen to this very carefully. Listen to this. See if you can catch this. A saint will. Listen. When you say, stay in his word every day, stay in his word, are you saying when we listen to you or just reading the Bible every day or every other day talking to the Lord or giving someone a good word or being nice to people? When we say every day is a good day, stay in the word, what we're saying is that Jesus is the living word. And you should stay with Jesus every day. He in you and you in him. Did you catch it? Sounds good, doesn't it? 
if you catch it. Okay, let's 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 go back to the beginning. Let's play that again. Listen. Listen to this smooth, subtle deception and confusion. Listen to it. Talk about a pretext. When you say stay in his word every day, stay in his word, are you saying when we listen to you or just reading the Bible every day or every other day talking to the Lord or giving someone a good word or being nice to people? When we say every day is a good day, stay in the word, what we're saying is that Jesus is the living word. And you should stay with Jesus every day. He in you and you in him. Did you catch that now? Did you catch that? These guys, they have a weird kind of mock form of rightly dividing. They, they do. But yet they're... Okay, they're against the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, and they believe that saints are going through the time of Jacob's trouble. They teach contrary to the mark of the beast. Okay, <laughs> all right. The gap theory, the serpent seed, soul annihilationism. These guys are lost. These guys are devils. But you see what he did? The individual that asked that question. Where, how he should have answered him. Uh, yes, you stay in the Word. The Scripture. Yes. Because, yes, Jesus is the Word made flesh. But see, how are you going to know who He is without the Scripture? See, this, this, these guys, he's got the suit and tie, the fancy schmancy stuff. He, 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 here, that, that, that's enough. That's enough. We, you, you, got, you, you got the point. You got the point. Okay. Scum. Devil. All right. He got the suit and tie, the fancy schmancy. They're giving the, again, the visual stimuli. Okay. And you, you, if you've ever watched them, they rarely compare Scripture with Scripture. Arnold Murray, he, he would do this thing with his fingers, and he'd do this kind of stuff, whatever, uh, ticks. But what he would do is, all he would do is just give his commentary on the Scripture. He rarely, if ever, gave, did a Scripture with Scripture study. Okay? Unfortunately, I have watched quite a few of their things. They're, 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 they're disgusting. But how he should have answered that individual. Now remember, if you believe, if you claim, if you claim to be dispensational, but yet, <laughs> well, well, no, Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. Time out. Time out. Time out. What, what changes to bring on the... Well, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he gets revealed. Okay, okay. But what brings him on? What, what, what withholdeth? The body of Christ. And see, you go to 2 Thessalonians. This, this is something that's um, um, is, is just full of wonder to me when it comes to, when it comes to this. Because you'll get these people who say that they are believing the redemption of the purchased possession, but then they say, well, I changed my mind because of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And it's like, Dad, why don't you keep reading the text? See, a text without a context is a pretext. Okay? A false front. Shepherd's Chapel, they're fake. They ain't real. They're Christians. They're Christians. But they ain't saints. And you people who are deceived by... They, they, they lull you over. They creep in the houses. They intoxicate you with, the, the, with their, their, their hyperboles and their rhetoric and stuff. 
facade. Man's wisdom there to take the place of the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that ought to be there and isn't. Okay? But like, like in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? Verses 7, <laughs> uh, verse 7 and 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Letteth means to hinder. Let means to hinder. Okay? All right? That's what that means. Now, these people will stop at, at, at verse 4. They don't. These guys are like, well, I used to believe, and I'm going to use their terminology. I used to believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, but I read 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, and now I'm post-trib because it's... You know what they do? They usually stop at three, or at the most four. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, which is already happening, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So they come to, well, I used to be pre-tribulation, but they're falling away but that man of sin, or they say that the Antichrist has to be revealed first. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, the third rebuilt temple, showing himself that he is God. Well, that, that's pretty, um, for example, for example, I have to the third temple. Huh? <laughs> are, are, are you really going to be one of those <laughs> who's like, well, that's a reference onto the second temple. Oh, the one that got destroyed in 90 AD? Come on. Third temple? Where's the third temple? Hmm? The, it will be built in troublous times, you read in Daniel. Okay? But see, they, they, they usually stop here, and that's, this is what these guys do. Okay, this is what these guys do. And then when you read uh, verse um, 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. See, and also some of them to try to drive it home. They don't get to, however. The point is, they stop usually at 4. Sometimes I have heard a couple go 5 and 6. They don't, they don't. Go on to verse 7. Because, okay, you look at verse 7. What? It's, who, what? Hey, Eric! What, is Jesus Christ going to be taken out of the way? No. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that spirit, you know. One God comprised of uh, spirit, soul, and body, okay? All right? God ain't going anywhere. Who is going to be taken out of the way. That be the body of Christ, the saints, the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We, saints, get redeemed. It's called scripturally the redemption of the purchased possession. Redemption of the purchased possession. We are the purchased possession. Saints, saved people, who went the elect way of the cross. The elect way of the cross. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord called upon his name, and he saved us. And when we are saved of the Lord, we are sealed with the Lord, okay? Once saved, always saved. All right? So, verse 7 there, not talking about the Lord. Hardly talking about Satan or anything like that. It's talking about the body of Christ. The redemption of the purchased possession happens. Verse 8. And then. And then. 
description of the purchase possession. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Who is the wicked? That man of sin, the son of perdition, also known as the abomination that maketh desolate, which our Lord talks about. Okay? When you see the abomination that maketh desolate, stand in the holy place. What is our Lord saying? When that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the third rebuilt temple and stands in the holy place and says, I bet I am having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? Okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed. It's not that we, the body of Christ, I heard Mr. Breaker say this. It's like, he believes like we're going to be there to see, oh, there's the, and then we go. No! Scripture, see these guys? They don't like seven and eight. I now believe in the post-tribulation rapture because of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, you stop somewhere between 1 <laughs> and 7. Okay? Alright? Because 7 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Second coming. And you can read on what we already covered. So, when you got someone who has a bizarre kind of form of dispensationalism, but yet deny the redemption of the purchase possession, uh, you talk about a red flag, okay? But now, here's what Mr. Murray, deceiving people, you are your own God. Like like Mary Baker Eddy. Messiah is mine. Mary Baker Eddy in that cantankerous book, which I purposely got, I didn't buy it, from a Christian scientist. So when my mother was alive, I could show her through scripture refuting that nonsense, but the Lord put a stop on that. It's like, it's not going to... Anyway, guys like Murray, guys like James Jesuit, James White, uh, John MacArthur, guys like that, who are brilliant people, okay, all right? Their mind is their Messiah. They are their own God. They use great swelling words of vanity, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. And to whoever it was who asked that question, this is how Mr. Murray should, Murray should have answered. Isaiah 28, verses 7 on to verse 13. But they, have, but they also have erred through wine and through strong drink, are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. <clears throat> Wang. Wang. Oh, let's read verses 1 on verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon. Anyone tells you otherwise, they're either ignorant or more likely a servant of the Vatican. Like Eric Lionheart. Like Stephen Anderson. Like Henry Morris. Like Henry Morris. Like Kent Helvin. You get somebody, Christian, 
trying to divert attention away from Rome and say, well, Mystery Babylon's America, they're either ignorant or they're a servant of the Vatican. And the names I just mentioned, they're servants of the Vatican. I remember Steve Anderson mockingly, it's like, how have I helped, uh, how have I helped Rome? Oh, Mr. Steven Anderson, number one, you're a sodomite. Number two, you're against the redemption of the purchase possession. Number three, you don't rightly divide. <laughs> okay? Okay? And number four, you teach that America's... Oh, gee, I wonder. I wonder how you're serving the Vatican. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Let's add the H, with the wine of her fornication. Yea, hath God said, He shall be as God. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. What, what bigger lie could there be? You shall be his gods. What big old? Tell me one. Well, the lie about the redemption. Well, 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 okay. What's, there, that's a big lie. To be against the redemption of the purchased possession. Yes. To say that in America's uh, mystery Babylon. Uh, yeah. That, what's the focal point? What's feeding that doctrine? Satan is. I will. I will. I will, I will, I will. He should be his gods. You know better. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a, saw a woman, Mother Church, sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, red or dark whatever, full of names of blasphemy. I know um, scarlet and red are not identical. I know that, okay? Full of names of blasphemy. Methodist. Episcopalian. Pentecostal. Oh, I'm going there. Baptist. Calvinist. Lutheran. I am of Paul. And I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? I'm not saying it. I'm just saying it. Full of names, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Rome's colors are white and gold. Uh, that's the facade. That's the pretext to divert your attention. Because when you, when you, when you, dude, okay, you, you guys pay attention to this Roman Catholic Astarte holiday coming up, okay? Um, pay attention, okay? Francis, <coughs> even Sosa, <coughs> excuse me. They usually wear some uh, vestige of, or vesture, excuse me, of red or scarlet, excuse me, or purple. The procession of cardinals and bishops. Purple and scarlet. The colors of the Vatican. Rome. Purple and scarlet. Okay. The white and gold of the papal flag. The white and black thing, right? With the reference on the mas uh, masonry, right? Purple and scarlet, people. Roman Catholicism is mystery Babylon. Someone coming around trying to instruct you in scripture and they say that mystery Babylon is anything other than Rome, that's an infiltrator, that's a servant of the Vatican. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, Mother Church, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, 
and upon her forehead was a name written. <laughs> and see, this is stuff like what Shepherd's Chapel guys do. The Seventh Day Adventists, they, with the mark of the beast, refer to it as the cookie and the ashes on the forehead. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, oh Seventh-day Adventist. I've had cordial, decent conversation with Seventh-day Adventists. Walter Veith, um, oh, oh, um, oh, Hughes, 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 okay? These guys have attacked the Jesuits quite, very, quite well. Yes, they have. But the, uh, the mark of the beast is the cookie. And the ashes on the... No! No! Don't... Don't forget, Seventh-day Adventists. Your little sect, your little group, is founded by a woman. And that... That they even... Yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? you ask my good enemy with the mustache about that one? Okay? <laughs> anyway. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Notice I didn't say mustache and beard. Okay? Drop it. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. It's like, wow! Okay? Back to Isaiah chapter 28. <clears throat> so, these people are drunk. Okay? They stagger with strong drink. You shall be as gods. Okay? Verse 8. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Who shall teach knowledge? And who shall make and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. First Peter, first Peter, okay? First Peter, oh, where, where is that, brother? Where is that? That's second Peter, isn't it? Where is that? Uh, I, I have this uh, keyed up in the... Um, I have this keyed up in the... Uh, in the uh, OBS, so I can't pause this. Ah, there it is. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Second Peter chapter two verses one, first Peter chapter two verse one and verse three. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. You got a Bible, that's not in there, is that? that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. And then in, you read in Hebrews that uh, milk is for babe, but strong meat is for those who are uh, grown up, who have their senses exercised, putting this into practice. Okay? Living the Scriptures. Okay? Okay? And Paul, I have fed you with milk and not with meat because you are not able to bear it. So, and how it says in uh, Timothy about not a novice, less like the fledgling of pride, he gets puffed up and fall into the condemnation of Satan. Okay? Whom shall he teach? Oh, back to Isaiah 28. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Sincere milk the word. 
those who are students of scripture, who search the scriptures daily, daily, whether these things be so. Let's continue. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, right there. That, that dude who asked that devil that question, there's the answer. Yes. Here a little, there a little. Wake up in the morning, read it, read the problem. You know, sometimes during the morning, read a psalm. Sometimes during the day, maybe read something out of Romans as the Lord leads. Here a little and there a little. Don't, don't do this thing where you like compare yourself like, well, Brad, you, you and your wife, you guys spent, that's us. Okay, that, that, that's what we, you know, this is what I've been called to do. Okay? Yes. Brethren, it's like, well, Brad, you know, the Lord gave you. I know. I know. But see, that, that, that doesn't diminish the fact that we are supposed to be in the scriptures. The scriptures. The lowercase w word of God. And see, Here's another thing that Mr. Murray there did, blurring distinction. He confused the capital W word in Scripture, which is always a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to look at that, and the lowercase w, which could be one of two, written or spoken. Okay? Majority of Scripture points to written, but there are places in Scripture where word, lowercase w, can be Verbal, like spoken word. But here's the thing. It's defined by context. Do, do, you get what I'm saying? So, so this poor guy who was deceived by that devil, Murray. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here a little, here a little, and there a little. Precept upon precept. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. Yes. Be in the scriptures every day. Simple. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. People who are drawn from the breast who have been fed with the sincere milk of the word. Okay? And did you not already see me stammering today? Okay? To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. And Matthew 11 is that, brother? Matthew 11. Is that Matthew 11? Oh, uh, ah, no. Yeah, yeah, it is. Matthew 11, 28 on the 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the Lord is that spirit. Okay? The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes, he will. The Lord himself teaches you of himself. Through what? Scripture. And, and, and see, what we're looking at with uh, these devils from uh, Shepherd's Chapel, okay, I, like I said, I've talked about these guys before. These guys are, you know, even a nominal Christian would be like, especially when they get into the uh, serpent seed doctrine and the dumb gap theory, uh, especially to the mark of the beast, if you've ever, I have that somewhere. Where I listen to this, like, wow, dude, you're crazy. Uh, most, even a nominal Christian, Christian, would be like, 
Okay, there's something wrong with these guys. A saint is like Shepherd's Chapel. Okay, but John chapter 8. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Where is that? That's, uh, um, uh, where is that? It's 5. It's John chapter 5. Excuse me. John chapter 5. Uh, where is that? Yes. Verses uh, 39 and 40. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me. That ye might have life. See, if you continue reading. Jesus. I receive not honor from men. Mr. Pastor Ma Murray there with the suit and tie and all the visual stimuli sounding like he's all this and that. Making up for something that isn't there. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive, because ye shall be as gods, Bullingerites, Ruckmanites, <laughs> uh, uh, Campbellites, uh, Lutheranites, German and Catholics, whatever kind of ites, okay? <laughs> Calvinists, okay? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you even Moses in whom ye trust. See, the Lord is pointing to the scripture. Moses, where where did you where do you get what Moses said? In the scripture. See, the Lord in this is actually uplifting the scripture. You got guys like Final Call, that dumb channel, uh, Bible is Mark of Beast, who say, Well, you don't need the Bible. You don't need a Bible. You need the scriptures. Okay, you need the scriptures. But they say you don't need to read the scriptures. Go with the feelings. No, and they, some will come to this. Uh, no, the Lord is pointing to the scriptures that point to Him. Okay? He's uplifting the scriptures. He has exalted His Word above His name. Not an NIV. What? The authorized version. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me for he wrote of me. But ye believe, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And there it is. Again, how can someone read the authorized version of the scriptures every day and still be lost? Believe us thou what thou readest? Oh yeah, you say you do, but wait a minute, do you? Let's well, let's talk. Oh, you don't believe in the redemption of the... <laughs> the, the... The New Testament began with the birth of... <laughs> Unless you forgive, you're not forgiven? <laughs> oh, Christians are going through the great... <laughs> you believe what you mean, huh? Isaiah 28, verse 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them. Who's the them? Well, we have just been talking about. Those who have not been drawn from the breast. Those who are their own God. Those who put uh, stock in honor from men. That they may be seen of men. They use the fancy schmancy stuff. Pharisees, Sadducees, fakes. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Fire coming out from within themselves, get it? Mr. Murray is shooting himself in, the old, in his own foot, and a saint saved, sealed, Saint will pick that out. A Christian won't. A Christian won't. Generally. Generally. There are some of these saints who want to call themselves Christians. That's your problem. Okay. 
that will pick that out. But Psalm 119. Mem. Psalm one. This is how Murray there, Murray, should have answered this individual. But he didn't. Psalm 119. Mem. I'm not going to give you the verse numbers this time. Find it. Psalm 119, men. You're supposed to stay in the Word daily. The Scripture. Oh, how I love thy law. It is that my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments have made, hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Okay. Law, commandments, testimonies, precepts. You find that. The scriptures. Okay. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Spoken. Context. Written. It is written. See, context, people. Context. Same as, you know. You know. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. So context, word there, is what? Written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Okay? All right? John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Context. It's like he's, he's referring to written. Written. Okay, and, and, and also Psalm 139, while we're here. It, it is Psalm 139, or is it, um, or is it Psalm 138? Yes, yeah, Psalm 138. I always get that one confused. Verses 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart. For the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Spoken or written? Written. 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 Acts 17. And that was a really wicked thing that the, the one bloke did you know all oh, the the uh, Bereans were lost? Yeah, but they 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 were being led of the Lord to Acts seventeen eleven. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the Scriptures daily whether these things were so. Now, word there that could be in context. Spoken, but see, but see, here's the here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing that you're not going to get away from, no matter how hard you try, and no matter how educated and Jesuit trained you think you are. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, okay, and searched the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. Mr. Murray should have answered that individual just like that. Being his word, being the scriptures. Well, well, what about, you know, see, in Matthew 18, in Matthew 18, 
Okay? Question. Matthew 18. Did Jesus Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the Scriptures yet? Hmm? The law was still binding. He was offering the kingdom of heaven. Talked about that in the, the other video. Okay? So, when you come to Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20, okay, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Okay? Question. Did Jesus Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. How did the new, when did the New Testament begin? Hebrews chapter 9 with the death of the testator. This is under the law still. Eternal security was not, look at me, eternal security was not there yet. Like the Pentecostals, which they believe is it is today, it isn't. They tell you that the Holy Ghost and Lord is that spirit can come and go, come and go, as if it were under, no. Today, if you go the elect way of the cross and the Lord saves you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? You are. So, when you come to, well, okay, we're two or three. And then you notice Mr. Murray. It's like, abide in him and him in you. He was saying that under a pretext that denies what? Eternal security. Because when you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, okay, abide in him. Today in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on his terms, the elect way of the cross, the way he elected, the way he chose, and you go his way, Broken of your self-righteousness. Contrition. Uh, manning up or womaning up. That you held the nail. You hammered him to the cross. And in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saves you. You're once saved, always saved. The Father. God, our Lord Jesus Christ lives within you. The Holy Ghost. You know the Lord is that spirit. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. God's in you. Now, you can quench the spirit and ignore him. Oh, but what's going to happen to you? What's going to happen to you is, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, Second uh, Timothy chapter two. It is uh, eleven on to verse thirteen. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to ourselves and to the world, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. They'll also deny us. That's not talking about salvifically. See, heretics like that will come to say, see, you can lose it. No. If that were the case, then what was written in Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14 is a lie. You have a contradiction. See, it's not our salvation. It's his salvation. Not ours. You're once saved, always saved. If you've gone, if you went his way, not yours, to him, the way of the cross. Okay? You're eternally secure. If you deny him, how, will, how do you deny the Lord? Not reading the scriptures? Going contrary to the scriptures? Huh? You can lose all kinds of things, but see, what you can't lose is not yours to lose. Salvation, which you have the Lord in you, the redemption of the person, you, you're his. You're the purchased possession. You can't lose what isn't yours. But you can lose a lot. Of, this isn't talking about salvation. Prove it to you. Absolutely. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We are of his bones and of his flesh. We are part. See, the body of Christ gets taken up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He cannot deny himself. It's not talking about salvation. We as saints can can wreck our lives, 
deny scripture and live like a devil? Okay, yes we can. Still go to heaven. The Lord will be ashamed of us. We'll still go to heaven. The Lord will be ashamed of us. Our testimony will be shot. All kinds of things will be going wrong with our lives. We'll be an embarrassment to the Lord. We get up to heaven. We'll be in heaven, which is better than being in hell. But he'll be ashamed of us for eternity. I don't want that. And no saint wants that either. Christians justify anything. Well, better than being in hell, and you're right. But see, you're preaching another Jesus and another gospel. Mr. Murray there is preaching another Jesus and another gospel. He is. He is. All right? So, about he and you and you and him. Okay? He said that to that individual in the pretext of absence of eternal security. Because if you are truly saved, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians, um, the Lord's in you. Okay? The Lord is in you. He's already in the midst. Okay? Uh, Matthew 18, 19, and 20 is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Before the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, was given unto believers permanently. Okay? See, that's the subtleness of the deception of what Mr. Murray did in that little video. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. And of course, the, you know, the stupid Calvinists. Okay, the, the video will be in the description box about the Calvinists. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 11 on to verse 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, our destination is fixed, not Calvinism, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, and the Lord is that Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Matthew 18, 19, and 20. is different dispensation. You go to the Lord on his terms and he saves you. You, you, you. We just read it. The Lord's already in the mist. But see, what he did there, what Mr. Murray did there, you and him and he and you, was a conditional thing. The pretext of denying, denying eternal security. Which I am pretty sure <laughs> Shepherd's Chapel is against. They're against eternal security. Oh, what do they call it? Conditional. So long as you abide in Him, you're saved. You fall. <laughs> even, even, even sleazy believists can get that one right. It's like conditional. You're only saved as long as you're... No. Then again, they don't rightly divide the word of truth, but even they can get that one right. Okay? See, that's the subtle deception of shepherd's chapel, shepherd's pie, <laughs> horse pie, okay, and Mr. Murray. Okay? John 14. Let, oh, we we go to... Uh, I like cabbage. I like cabbage. I love you, brother. I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay. Uh, John, uh, where are we? John 14, 6 and 9. On to 9. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it shall suffice us. Jesus saith unto him, <laughs> Have I been so long time with you, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shewest the Father? 
That's the simplest one that you can go to in Scripture. That's why we looked at it to prove Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay. Trinitarians are devils. There are some that are ignorant with that. We have to have grace for, brother. Okay, because remember, from the inception of Rome, one God and three persons. That was like their starting doctrine. Okay, and over the centuries, these poor Christians believe that one God is one equals three. Okay, so we have to have grace for them. Okay, they're ignorant of that, but once they hear the arguments, and still like the, the um, ex-Catholic, <laughs> yeah, right, the ex-Catholic Englishman, yeah, right, ex-Catholic, sure, sure, I think perhaps maybe no, who, you know, knows the argument, but defends the Trinity, that's dumb. That's a coagitor. Okay? Ex-Catholic, my, my left buttock. Okay? And, and uh, look now at verses in 14, is that? 15 on to verse 18. Okay? In John 14. If you love me, keep my commandments. Before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? He hadn't died yet. He's going to. Okay? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another capital C comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now he's making reference onto the coming of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, the next dispensation that is following. This dispensation. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, like Shepherd's Chapel, like John MacArthur, like Jesuit James White, like Ray Comfort, okay, like uh, Paul Washer, like all these guys who use big sounding words and put on this lovely facade and visual eye candy. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Shall be in you, hasn't been hasn't given yet as a permanent resident, okay? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right there, verse 18, pointing to what First uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 already says, read the whole, read the whole chapter, okay? That the Lord is that spirit. See, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not one God taking on the mode of the Father in the Old Testament, the mode of the Son, before the death, burial, and resurrection, and the mode of the, that's modalism. No, 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 no. That's heresy. Okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? Uh, John 15, 23, on to verse 27. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none of the men did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Verse 24, have seen both me and my father. Jesus Christ is the father, the soul of the Godhead. Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The word made flesh is the body. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? All right, right there. But yet, you know, in verse 23, well, I don't hate Jesus. I don't, I don't hate Jesus. I'm not against. I'm not against Jesus. Oh, yeah? Do this. Don't, don't do this. But, you know, it's like, oh, I love Jesus. Really? Huh. Hey, so you're a Trinitarian, huh? Yeah. Here's what I think of your trinity. Don't do that. Don't. Don't, brother. Don't do that. Okay, I've done that. And see the reaction? I saw the reaction. You go to a Trinitarian and say that Jesus is the Father, they will take a, if they had a gun, they, Jesus is not the Father! Which Jesus do you claim to love? The one in the... 
Use your imagination, the one in the middle. People, Trinity is satanic. Just, just so you know. Okay? But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. Context! Oh boy! They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I shall send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, verse 18, in chapter 14. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Jesus is the Father. He just said it. Okay? And, of course, uh, John 16, 7 on verse 13. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. And see, remember Peter? He's like, this will not be unto you, Lord. The disciples didn't want that. Of course they were going to. He's got the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. But see, again, if they were looking forward to the cross, like like these these easy believers guys like to say, and even uh, uh, Stephen Anderson says, they were looking forward to the cross. <laughs> Garden of Eden, no, they weren't. If they were, then why would the Lord say, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, is that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay, the Trinity is a joke. Okay? And it's not funny. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. See, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. Okay? God is bigger than anything. Okay? God could be in a hundred places at the same time. The body of Christ, the saints, we all have the Father in us. Does that mean there's like a million fathers? No! How can God the Father be in heaven yet be on the cross? How can God the Father be in heaven yet be in the Garden of Gethsemane? Again, uh, dear friend, I do believe your question was answered in that one video I told you in the one comment section to, um, to go over who was on the cross. It's the same principle. It's like, okay, there, is, there he is on the throne in Revelation that you mentioned. There he is on the throne and there's the Lamb. How do you explain that? Okay? I have many things yet to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, see, bear them now, because the Holy Ghost, the Lord himself, wasn't a permanent resident yet. We won't be able to bear them now. How be it, when he, he, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shew it unto you. Okay? See, Mr. Murray intentionally, that guy's not ignorant. He knows what he's doing. He's a devil. He intentionally blurred that distinction between lowercase w which is defined by its context versus capital W, which appears seven times in Scripture. 
unless you got a Bible like an NIV or the LSD version by MacArthur, okay, uh, it only appears six times because they doubt the Johannian comma, okay? John chapter 1. Hey, Christ, hey, saint, your brother, you got one of these? Don't, don't you, if you got, you, you want one of these gel things, they're like waxy or crayon or crayon. Crayons are good. Okay, crayons are good. Or you got a pen? Get yourself a piece of paper. Get your scriptures ready. Okay. This is in the co uh, community section on this channel that the Lord gave me, but we're going to go through it here. Mr. Murray intentionally deceived and blurred the distinction. Mr. Murray should have told that individual uh, be in his word daily. He blurred that distinction. Capital W word. Yes, Jesus is the living word, yes. But remember, even the Lord himself makes a distinction between capital W word and lowercase word, which could be written, which it is more likely so, or spoken, but then again, that's defined by the context, the savage. Okay? This ain't, this, like I said, see, this ain't hard stuff to figure out. And yeah, hath God said. John, chapter 1. Japan. In the beginning was the capital W word. And the capital W word was with God. And the capital W word was God. Not a past tense, meaning like he wasn't anything like he isn't now, okay? You read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. You see the Godhead in action. Where? God said. Okay? God 3. Okay? All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Look across to the page to verse 14. And the word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Holy place here. And go to second, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Ah, uh, verse 15 and 16. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Word made flesh. Okay. Rocket science here. Justified in the spirit, capital S. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? So we see in John chapter 1, four times, appearance of capital W word. Okay? Now, also go to 1 John. 1 John. Why did I have Genesis 1? Oh, yeah, I already mentioned that. 1 John. Chapter 1. Go to 1 John chapter 1. Okay, we're at 4. Four capital W words. Okay? 1 John chapter 1. Come on. That which was from the beginning. And what are we reading? Uh, verses 1 on to verse 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. Handled. Now, yes, they actually, you know, John leaned his head on Jesus' bosom. Yes, he did. 
Okay? Word of Life, capital W. It is not a reference onto the written. Okay? They, they touched him. Okay? Look, handle me. See, a spirit doesn't have flesh and blood like I do. They touched him. Okay? Thomas. It's like, hey. But see, about Thomas, we don't have any uh, record in Scripture that Thomas, like, actually put his finger there in the palm of his hand and in his side. But see, they handled him. They touched him. That's what that means. Okay? It's not talking about the written word. Capital W. It's the Lord himself. Five. That's five times. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Flesh did not become God. And see, so many people get that backwards. Number six. The one that the Jesuits remove, Duxohanian comma. First John chapter five, verse seven. Go ahead, pause the video, read the context. Go ahead, let's read a little context here. Let's get a little bit of the sandwich, shall we? Verses six, on to verse eight. This is he that came by water and blood, water. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And blood. Shed his blood on the cross. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit, capital S, that bears, beareth witness. Because the capital S Spirit is truth. And the Lord is that Spirit. The Spirit of truth. Get it? Okay? Water. Natural birth. Not twitchum, even though he was baptized. To identify him. Okay? Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the soul of the Godhead. The capital W word, sixth time. And check your Bible. That, that's not in there, is it? So, like the NIV, the ESV, the um, uh, New American Standard, and the LSD version, they only have six capital W words. Interesting. Six is the number of man, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The Father, the soul, the word, a place, and the Holy Ghost. Lord is that spirit. And these three are one. The Father, the soul, the word, made flesh, the Holy Ghost, the spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons. Okay. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, capital S, and the water, natural birth, and the blood. They shed on the cross. And these three agree in one. Sum that up for you very simply. <laughs> Again, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to glory, received up into glory. That's six times. Capital W word. You know, when I uh, have converse with brethren via email or whatnot, I capitalized the letter B or S for brother or sister. Um, I understand people, they want to show reverence, will capitalize W when they talk about it. Don't do that. Because whether, okay, you might be, well, well, Brad, when you talk to me as your brother, you always capitalize the B. It's like, that's right. That's right. But see, when it comes to the word, Okay, scripture is clear. Seven. Seventh time. Seventh time. Okay. Um, Revelation. Revelation. 
Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven, this is the second coming. And I saw heaven open, and upon, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the seventh and final capital W word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us. We go up, and we come back down with him right there. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, authorized version of the scriptures. He's speaking a word, not a physical, literal sword. Okay? That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture an article of clothing, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, which is written on to the Hebraic Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow that's part of a body. A person is a spirit, soul, and body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God can be no effect onto like an animal. Because they have a they have a spirit and a body, but they don't have a soul. Fluffy doesn't have a soul. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to see his Fritz in heaven. But the, not, the spirit of the beast that got downward to the earth? Okay, never mind. Okay? Seven appearances of the capital W word. Which which Mr. Murray purposely blurred. That, that man's not ignorant. He knows what he's doing. He's a devil. He's going to hell. And he's leading you people to hell because you people what? You people think you are your own God. We'll end with this again. See this? This is what Mr. Murray and unfortunately you people who are duped by Bullingerites like Shepherd's Chapel. This is what you, you don't have. You're not saved. A saint is going to... Be, wait a minute, dude. John 3, verses 5 on verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, natural born, natural birth, and of the capitalist spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And you watch and listen to the marais at Shepherd's Chapel. It's all flesh. It's all uh, fleshly wisdom. And that which is born of the spirit, capitalist is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. Paul never said born again. You're right. He never said born again. He defined it. He defined being born again, people. Yes, Peter makes being born again. Yes, Paul never said being born again. You're right. He defined it. He defined it. Okay? Come on, people. He defined it. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. What is that, brother, in Ezekiel? Not Ezekiel. Uh, Ecclesiastes. Is that 8? Is that 8? 
where the tree falls, there it lies, uh, or is that 10? Where the word of the king is, uh, which should, uh, no, no, where is that, where is that, where is that? Uh, where the tree falleth, there it, uh, it's, uh, yeah, there, there it is. Ecclesiastes 11, and then we'll be done. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Ver, uh, 1 on verse 4. For thou shalt find it after many days. Cast thy bread, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Waters, that flowing waters coming out, out, you know, out of thy belly. For thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Wind, wind without rain. You know how it says, yeah, let's go to Jude. I know I said we were going to be done, but come on. Go to Jude. Jude does not have chapters. Jude, Jude, uh, verse 12, on to verse 13. Guys like Shepherd Chapel, Marais, and all these brilliant, you know, Jesuit training, you know, suit and ties, the, the, uh, the visual stimuli, the guys who put, you know, look the part, you know, with the little uh, Dudley Do-Right mustaches, you know, just emulating people. These are spots in your feasts of charity, self-sacrifice. Self when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. Twice dead. Second death. Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea. And in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, the waters that the horse sitteth on are peoples, nations, and tongues, and stuff like that. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, people, stay away from Shepherd's Chapel. Those guys are lunatic, evil, vile, rancid, wicked devils. They're lying to you. They have not the spirit. They have that spirit of Antichrist. But they have not the spirit of God. They are liars. They're warned. There will be a uh, plethora of in the description box of links uh, refuting these guys. Okay. So there you go. Our dear brother Jeff Jones, please keep him in your in your prayers. Um, he has not gotten back to me uh, a while ago. Our dear brother did a dipsy doodle and bashed the back of his head in on the concrete, and he has not been the same since. Uh, they checked him out. He doesn't got a concussion or anything like that, but there's there's stuff going on. So please keep our dear brother uh, Jeff Jones in your prayers. Please pray for him. Please pray for him. And brother, if you see me, send me a text message. At least let me know that you're okay. Okay. And also too. Um, Tomorrow, uh, we um, tomorrow, sixty-six years ago, the Lord brought in onto this earth a very special woman. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching this. If you do, love you, and we will see you in the next video. Whatever that may be, okay. Praise the Lord in the highest.